Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, Google announced their own processor. GPU stock won't be back to normal until when? RTX 4000 cards get huge clocks and Intel's monster gaming GPU finally gets a release date. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, it looks like Apple isn't the only tech giant that's been working on designing their own chip. That's right, a small company you may never have heard of, called Google, just announced that their next generation of flagship phones, the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, will include an in-house processor called Tensor. Now, rumors have been circulating about a Google SoC for a while now, but today the company made their new chip official. And given Google's focus on AI with their Pixel Phone's camera tech, it's no surprise they co-designed the chip with machine learning and artificial intelligence experts. In fact, they've been working on it for the past four years, so this isn't something Google quickly threw together. Unfortunately, they haven't really given any details in regards to specs, but it could actually give the Pixel Phone some exclusive features. And of course, while Tensor is built specifically for Google's smartphones, it's really interesting to see yet another company build their own processors. Google's hardware chief actually stated that they reached the limit of what they could do on other companies' chips, so they built their own. Time will tell whether it was actually worth it or not. But first, stop reading how-to books, listening to boring lectures, or memorizing endless formulas. Learn computer science the right way with today's sponsor. Brilliant, the website and app that actually teaches you by doing, which means you get to jump right into solving problems with fun, interactive lessons. Plus, Brilliant has something for every skill level, from the basics of computer science to quantum computing or even artificial neural networks. Brilliant has it all, and they're constantly adding more, as well as updating their current classes with even better interactive content. So stop wasting time learning the wrong way. Do it right the first time by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermelt, and the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up, I have a terrible story for anyone hoping to buy a new GPU anytime soon. If you've been following the channel, you know that a perfect storm of sorts has been causing the sky-high prices of GPUs over the last eight months. First, there was high demand from miners thanks to sky-high crypto prices and gamers stuck at home from the thing that shall not be named. Then there's been a massive industry-wide shortage, once again, from the thing that shall not be named. Well, thanks to China's crackdown on crypto, we finally began seeing huge dips in pricing back in June, with even more at the beginning of July. We even saw a story that found miners selling used GPUs for under MSRP. It was definitely something to get excited about, and tons of outlets were doing just that. Unfortunately, we later saw the pricing more or less even out. Well, we now have a story from Reuters where they go over comments on the shortage from the CEO of ST Microelectronics. In the article, the CEO states, quote, Things will improve in 2022 gradually, but we will return to a normal situation not before the first half of 2023. That's 2023, people, and not the first quarter. Nope, the first half. Now, I will say that AMD's CEO recently claimed things would get better in 2022, but from there, it seems ST Microelectronics CEO basically means back to completely normal, like regular chip inventory, etc. So things will likely be a lot better next year to where gamers could at least have a chance to buy a GPU, but it likely won't be completely normal where you can just go online and buy something in any situation until potentially 2023. Really, I don't even know what to say. Next up for today, it looks like NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 4000 GPUs, codenamed Ada Lovelace, are set to be a massive performance jump over the RTX 3000 cards. I'm talking way bigger than the jump we saw from the 2000 to 3000 cards. The first part of the story originally comes from Ulysses on Twitter, and later by WCCF Tech. In the tweet, he states that the jump from the RTX 30 series to the 40 series will be like going from Maxwell to Pascal. And if you were around back then, you know that Pascal was one of the biggest generational jumps in a really long time. 
Remember, it makes up the 1000 series, so we're talking some of the most popular GPUs. The 1060, 1080, 1080 Ti, meaning it's becoming clear why leaks have suggested the 40 series will be a huge power hog. Nvidia simply isn't holding anything back, and that's further shown in another tweet by Ulysses. In it, he claims the RTX 40 series gets between 2.2 and 2.5 GHz boost clocks. That's a massive difference when we compare it to the 1.7 GHz range of the RTX 3000 cards. Not only that, but known leaker Graymon55 replied to the tweet in agreement and stated that Ada Lovelace's frequency will be very high. All in all, this is great news. While AMD is rumored to use an MCM design on their next-gen cards, Nvidia clearly isn't playing around either. And sure, that looks to mean huge power requirements, but it also means big performance. And lastly for today, we finally have information on the release of Intel's first real gaming GPU. The story was originally posted by Hardware Academy on the Weibo forums, who Video Cards claims is a popular creator on the platform. And according to them, Intel's DG2 GPU, which is the GPU we've been waiting for. Remember that DG2 is set to be Intel's first GPU that's based on their HPG architecture, which is their high-performance gaming cards. I'm talking this should be the one with hardware ray tracing and everything. Anyway. According to the post, Intel is planning to release the card during CES next year. And of course, that means early January. Basically, while Intel has been teasing their discrete gaming GPUs for years now, it looks like they're finally gearing up for a real release. And sure, it won't be this year, but if this leak is right, we'll get the cards first thing in 2022. Let's just hope they're actually worth the wait. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Intel's first real gaming GPUs? Or do you just think it's pointless until stock is finally back? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!